This is the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge, round four, week five, and this week we're exploring the question, just how small can you draw? <laughs> Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome mad creators to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And we're gonna talk about one of those things, not so much the aliens or the robots, but we're gonna talk, or at least we're gonna mention zombies because that is the subject of my comic book that I've been working on that's part of this challenge. If you're not familiar with the challenge, it is the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge started by Kevin Cross. Basically, this is how it goes. You spend at least 30 minutes a day, every day, working on your own personal comic book project. And you do that for 100 days straight, and at the end of those 100 days, it stands the reason that you've made a lot of progress on your comic book. Maybe you haven't finished it yet but you're way further along than if you just didn't do anything and I think that I think just starting is the problem with the, that a lot of people have and this challenge is just designed because the other problem people have is they say they don't have time to work on the comics but everyone has at least 30 minutes a day to work on their comic book project or any project. I mean, you, you can take this and you can customize it to whatever you're doing. And it doesn't matter if you're a writer, if you're a penciler, or if you're doing this for some other thing, but since we're talking about comics, we're gonna keep it comic specific. But like I said, you do that and you're a lot further along on your comic book. That is my goal. I'm doing mine a little differently. And that is, I am spending an hour a day. So you can sort of customize it, but I don't think you want to go back and you don't want to do less than that 30 minutes. That 30 minutes is sort of a standard. But there is another factor to the challenge, and that is not only do you have to work on your comic for 30 minutes a day every day for 100 days straight, you also have to hold yourself accountable. And how do we do that? We do that by posting on social media. I guess you don't, I guess you could do it if you've got like a, a buddy or something that you that you go to every day and, and you tell them what the progress is. If you're working like that, I guess you could do it. But for most people, the easy way to do is like what I'm doing, like I'm doing videos, posting videos or posting on like any social media, you know, outlet, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, if it's in a Discord, you know, whatever you want to do as long as you're letting people know about that and people are aware that you're doing the challenge and they can hope hold you accountable for that uh, like I said uh, I'm doing things a little differently I'm doing an hour a day instead of the 30 minutes at least hopefully more and most of the time I do work a little more than an hour but at least an hour a day and then the other thing that I'm doing a little differently only because I've done this challenge so many times and I've, I've kind of proven that I can do it that I'm not doing those daily updates I'm doing them weekly, and that's what you're watching right now is my weekly update for week five. Uh, if you haven't done this challenge, first you want to see if you could do it the way that it's set out, and then if you want to maybe not do that every day. I would stick with it the way it's designed. Uh, I've done that that way twice, and I've done it. This is my second time doing it, where I'm only doing weekly updates. So this is my fourth round. Uh, and again, I'm at week five, so that'll tell you that. But what I was talking before about zombies, uh, and yeah, zombies, that is the subject of my comic book, Young and the Dead. It is a kids versus zombie story. So if you're into Goonies, if you're into all those old action films starring kids of the 80s, if you're into Stranger Things, it's kind of like that. But you know, Monster Squad, Explorer, all that kind of stuff. All those great movies I loved as a kid. And if you're not familiar with those things, like Monster Squad, Goonies, all that stuff, definitely check them out because they're a lot of fun, especially if you've watched Stranger Things and you like that. That's kind of where it all comes from. And that's where my book comes from as well. So it's Kids vs. Zombies. It's like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. If you're into that, uh, these are available at my website. But let's talk about where I am in the challenge and sort of where I've been and what's coming up and all that stuff and just give you sort of the rundown because like I said, this is <laughs> I'm doing this once a week where I let you guys know where I am. And like I said, it is to hold me accountable, but I also do these videos because I think there's some takeaways that you guys can have in just talking about my process and things like that that maybe give you guys some ideas. And then I want to ask questions from you guys what can help you make better comics or what you guys are doing because maybe you guys have a different process that might even help me out or help others out. So feel free to talk about those in the comment section and then uh, you because that's how we learn. All right, so on the last update, I mentioned that I finished the script for not only one issue, but two. Uh, this here is the issue, this is script for issue five. I also did the script for issue six, which is, which is the, the last issue. 
Uh, but now that I've got both scripts done, I know how the story is gonna unfold and most more importantly, how it's gonna conclude. Now I'm just going back to focusing just on this issue five, which is the next issue. I've got four issues already out there. So, you know, got the script done. There's gonna be maybe some minor changes. I'm gonna have an editor look it over. Editor meaning my girlfriend who's a writer. So she's gonna check it out. She's gonna help me with that stuff. But uh, even before, I, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of changes. There might be some little minor things. So I'm on to the next step, which is thumbnailing. So if you're not familiar with what thumbnailing is, if you are familiar with maybe like storyboards for movies or like animated pictures, they do animatics. It's basically just a way to, before you go, and in comics, it's relative, and we're not spending tons of money, but in movies, they don't wanna waste all this time and money and all these people's efforts and everything just going straight to you know filming and everything without sort of a game plan so what they'll do is they will storyboard out the film or at least they do that in you know some films don't need storyboards if it's if it's more of a drama and there's not a lot of action going on uh, typically you don't need to you don't always need to do storyboards for that but big action films and things like that it's important to storyboard all that stuff out so when you once you get into the visual effects and all that you're not spending all that money and then realizing oh this I don't know if this is gonna look good so you know that's kind of what it is where you plan all that stuff out or in animated pictures again animation costs a lot of money so what what animators or animation studios usually do are really rough animatics which are, are just a really rough version of the story and basically a lot of times what they'll do is just take storyboards and then we'll animate them a little just to give people an idea or their animators something to go on. Uh, we do the same thing with comics and you know some some people skip this process uh, but I you know I would usually recommend that, that you don't skip the thumbnailing because again you don't want to get all that detail into your page get this page and then realize it's not working out and then just have to waste all that time that you spent on a page so you know thumbnail is just taking and making really quick almost stick figures so one of the things we talked about when we were talking about scripts was that there's no set comic book script format. There may be more popular uh, ways of doing it. There may be, you know, there's any number of different ways you can format a script for comics. No right or wrong way. Certain publishers may want theirs presented in a certain way or certain artists or writers might. But in actuality, there's really no comic book format for scripting in quotes. And thumbnailing is pretty much the same thing. Uh, you can do thumbnailing however you want. I have a little I think my process is a little different than most people, and I'm not saying that you have to do it this way, but I'll kind of show you what I do, and I'll let you be the judge. I spend a little more time with thumbnailing because I do two rounds of thumbnailing. Again, this isn't necessary, but for me, it, it, it just helps the process along a little better. It, it, it works for me, and I'll kind of show you what I, what I do. Now, here's the thing, because I talk about this all the time as well, that you don't want to spend so much time in the in the pre-production of your comic book uh, you got to watch out for all that world building where you're spending all these times coming up with all the ideas I mean you do need that stuff especially for certain kinds of stories but if you're so bogged in down into that that you don't actually get to work on your story that becomes a problem that I think that's the problem a lot of people have is they they're they're so I mean they spent years coming up with the ideas and, and planning all this stuff out and a lot of that stuff doesn't even really seep into the actual comic. And they're just prolonging, and a lot of times this is just us, you know, we have this fear of actually starting that book, so we spend all that time in that pre-planning stage. So even though I, I go a little further with thumbnails, I am very cautious that I'm not spending too much time. Um, and as you can see, I'm chronicling this whole process as I do these videos. For this week, I spent the bulk of my time on what I call pre-thumbnails or pre-thumbs. Uh, I don't know if anyone else uses this term, I do. And really the only difference is, and I can show you, here's some samples that I've done before. Uh, this was what I did for issue five. And I don't know if you can see this, you probably can't make out what any of this stuff is, and that's fine. Uh, this, basically this pre-thumbnail stage for me is just me taking the script and I'm basically just trying to get an idea of, you know, the panel layouts. But even though in the script I will say how many panels I have, I don't necessarily know the orientation of those panels. You know, I, I, and sometimes I'll say it's a wide panel or it's a medium shot or whatever. So I have a little bit of an understanding, but it's not until I get to this little stage that I, I can kind of see those panels coming together. And there's just a little indication of what goes in there. 
like I said, it's so rough. I can tell that this is a building, so it's an establishing shot. Uh, here, there looks like a doorway or whatever. And then some of these I've got just really rough, like I said, almost stick figure -y, you know, pictures of, uh, of what's going on, just to give me a basic idea. And from there, my next step, which I'll get more into, I already started this, but I'm not gonna show any of that, but next week I'm gonna get into what is the next stage, which are my actual, I guess what you would call thumbnails. Now these are a little larger than most people work with thumbnails. Again, no standard format, uh, but you can see I'm working about this size right here. Now, if you notice, these are all done traditionally with pen and pencil, okay? That's, I would really recommend that you do your thumbnails uh, traditionally in pen or pencil. And like I said, with the, with the pre-thumbs, I do them in pen because I'm not worried so much about mistakes. I don't have to go back and erase anything like that. So I'm just going straight on here, making it permanent in pen. But then when I get to the second stage of thumbnails, I go with pencil. Now the reason why, and, and I'm not against digital art at all, just so you know, I mean, I do both. This comic that I'm gonna be doing, I'm definitely going to be doing all the penciling digitally, all right? so. So it's not that I'm against pencil, uh, penciling or, or illustrating digitally at all, but the problem with doing your thumbnails digitally is that you've got that, it's really hard not to zoom in and start worrying about the details and everything. And I guess if you can find a way where you, you can just say to yourself, I'm not gonna zoom in, I'm not gonna do anything, and I'm just gonna sketch this stuff out, maybe, but for this, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. I'm not, because you don't want to spend all that time putting too much detail in these things. That's the main thing that you're trying to avoid because that comes later. That comes when you, we're just getting an idea of the story. If you spend way too much time with these really detailed thumbs, then, you know, it's a lot of that's just unnecessary. Now, as I mentioned, there's really no format for thumbnail. You can do whatever you want. You can go in and you can draw little squares and you can draw them in, that's fine. I do have some products out there that are helpful. Some people like, you know, to keep everything together like in a notebook. So I do have like the Make Your Own Comics thumbnail. It's basically just a journal with thumbnail pages all throughout. And in the beginning of all my workbooks, there's just some tips and things like that. But most of it are just these blank pages and it's really handy to keep with you. It's portable, whatever. I will leave a link. These are on Amazon, so if you've got Prime, it's free shipping. So I'll leave a link to where you can find these. And then I've got other products that have some thumbnails. I, I, I think there might be one in the Comic Maker Starter Kit that's free. It's a little different than that one. But what I did, I have another product called the Comic, or the Amazing Comic Book World Builder. And that's got templates for like page templates and everything. And there's just all kinds of mastheads and different things like that that are, are kind of throwbacks to old Marvel and DC comics and just all kinds of resources, backgrounds that you can drop in and alter and perspective grids, all kinds of things. It's a huge, it's just a huge thing. That's available at Design Cuts. I'll leave a link to that as well. But this is part of there's a there i just took this out of the one of the master pages and it's like i said it's it's got grids it's got lettering guides all that stuff and it also has these thumbnails so i just took that off so that's what i'm using for this size again it's not really that difficult to go and just draw little squares too so you don't have to do all that but there's different options there so anyway i took this and as you oh it's upside down here okay and as you can see the other thing i'm doing is i'm trying to figure out where I'm getting an idea, and I have an idea in the script as well, but as you can see, this, this standalone page right here, there's no page here because this is the first page you open up, and then from then on, you've got these spreads. Um, I don't have any ads or anything to separate my book, so this is just what it is here. And at the very last page here, as you can see, I've crossed these off. That, that's the page turn, so it's that single page at the end. It's a 22-page comic. So all the rest of the pages I just X'd out. But you can see how for this issue, this is pretty much what I did this last week. I did a little more than that. I went, I went further. We'll show more of that next week. But very rough, very, I mean, most people, I even have, some, sometimes I even have a hard time uh, reading, I mean, figuring out what I, what did I put there? Because it's very vague. But that's all I want at this point, because I'm just getting an idea for these panels and everything. And as I'm writing my script and as I'm doing these panel layoffs, and it's the, one of the reasons why it's really important that I do this is because in these next two issues, I, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll put this out there, I'm very guilty of using a lot of panels and trying to cram a lot of stuff onto a page. That's just the way I work, that's the way my mind works. 
Uh, I'm trying to get away from that. So anytime I get a, anytime I do a, I, I write a page that's that's less than like eight panels, I'm like super super happy. And there are some. I mean, there's some that are spreads, and there's some that are single one giant, you know, uh, splash page or whatever like that. But those are few and far between, especially in these next two issues where. Most of them come out to about seven or eight panels, which is a lot. Now, some of those panels are just very, they're just like, you know, if you show, I've got one panel that'll show somebody, you know, turning a knob on a radio. So it's so small. It, I mean, it doesn't take up as much space and there's no dialogue in it. It's just a sound effect. It'll say click or something like that. So I do have some of these little tiny panels, but but even even with that, once you get up into that like eight panels, and there's of course you've got your nine panel grid, which is pretty standard. Um, but beyond that, you're 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 kind of <laughs> you're you're getting to the point where it may be too much. So I try to avoid that, but it's really hard for me. So that's why it's so important that I that I lay these out and make sure they work. Make sure I have enough room, and I still not. 100% positive. Once I start dropping the dialogue and the word balloons and everything and the captions in here, then I may find that I may not be able to, to fit everything I need and then it gets to the point where maybe I have to edit some of that down or or whatever, but we'll cross that bridge to, when we come to it. Getting most of that out of the way with these, what I call pre-thumbs and then later on moving into the way I do thumbnails, which you know is kind of about this size so I'll do thumbnails like that. Most people, I think most people probably work with a size a little more like this, around this size. And those are the, that's the size that is available in, in the books and everything. So, but it's up to you however you wanna do it. But I do recommend that you think about doing thumbnails if you're doing a comic. Maybe it depends on the comic book project. If it's, a, if it's kind of a quick mini comic or something, maybe not. Uh, but I always like to do thumbnails. So it's just something that I suggest that other people do as well. Do it however you want, but probably at least at least try it out uh, before you get to actually drawing your, your finished pages. So anyway, those are some of my thoughts and some of my process on creating thumbnails for comics, but I wanna know what you guys think. Do you guys do thumbnails? Do you just skip that process? Do you work like large thumbnails? Do you work on the little bitty tiny thumbnails somewhere in between? I wanna know how you guys do it. Let me know in the comments section and I will see you guys later next week for week what? Week six. I'll see you then. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Cirkworks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to Cirkworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.